Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock at 7-11 and Journey on Rock 102. Uh, it's going to be rainy today with a high of 44 and then changing over to sleet and freezing rain uh, by late tonight. Uh, tomorrow, going to make for a messy as the winter storm warning will be in effect until midnight tomorrow and a high of 36. It's 39 right now in downtown Springfield. You know, they used to call me back in the day. Uh, Steve? Uh, Stevie T. Flap. No kidding. Uh, never stuck, though. Never That's kind of surprised. That would have been a moniker. I would have. I would have really had traction. I have a good name like uh, like a food. Yeah. Well, Bobby Rose Beef has been uh, in the area for an awful long time. In fact, you've probably have seen him at other events where he's done trivia and everything else. He does mobile DJing, but he also is the co-host of a very cool podcast, the Jigs and Bigs podcast. It's all about fishing, and he's on the phone with us right now. Good morning, Bobby. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys today? Good, man. So tell us how uh, you came up with this idea for the podcast. You, you were telling me the other day you came up with this uh, in the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, well, um, I, you know, about March 2020, my calendar freed up um, indefinitely uh, for quite a while. And uh, yeah, you b- believe it <laughs> or not. an unusual thing to hear. Uh, about the only thing I was able to do that time was what I love most, and that was fishing. So I, I kind of embraced the free time. And I've always... <laughs> wanted to get into that uh, fishing content creation sort of circle, but I wasn't exactly mm-hmm. sure, what, number one, what platform I wanted to utilize, and then uh, I never really had the time, because I've, I've got a lot happening with you know, events and things like that. So, I, right. I, I used this opportunity, and it was sort of like, okay, you know, pretty bleak times back then, you know, when it, my entire business had disappeared, I decided I was going to just do what I, what, I, what I do, and go with the podcast i figured i would make something that somebody might want to listen to while they were out on the water it was ultimately now, here's so you know here's the uh, the interesting thing so yep. you, you come up with this idea now you're uh, you're 100 episodes in yeah and in fact uh, to the point and it's grown to the point where you're doing your 100th episode live mm-hmm. this saturday at uh, at nathan bills that's pretty cool yeah it's pretty amazing man and the be- actually the best part about it is this is Twofold. We're celebrating the hundredth uh, episode, but the the really what we're using this for is a, a launch pad to um, sort of get ready for the uh, the Oseg uh, Sportsman Show at the Big E. Uh, we're doing a live episode there as well, so we need to practice this before we get there. And uh, right. we figured the one hundredth episode lining up it was just it was meant to be, so we figured we go for it. But the other cool thing is all last year we run online. Uh, uh, CPR, catch, photo, and release tournaments nationwide. And uh, a large portion of, of the uh, income that came in from that, we've turned around to make Massachusetts fishing spots great again. And we're, we're going to be presenting them with a giant check that night. So that event the, the on Saturday night at Nathan Bills, that's actually a fundraiser yeah. for them. And we're, we're going to be making a pretty sizable donation to that amazing organization. Oh, awesome. Hey, uh, you know, speaking of fishing, uh, I was yep. reading a story yesterday about this guy doing magnet fishing. Have you heard about this? Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> oh, I am so fascinated by this. Yeah. It's, it's basically you take a rope and you get this big, heavy magnet on it. Yeah. And you nearly like, you go to like a waterway, like a river, or like over a, like a bridge or right. something, and you drop the magnet down and you see what you pull up. Well, this guy pulls up uh, like some sort of sniper rifle. Yep. Uh, yesterday, did you read? Did you see that story? I think I did see that one. You see, you hear yeah, about that all the time. People will find guns, do you, do you, all kinds do you, do you of stuff. Get in, do you get into talking about magnet uh, and, and does fishing game have a limit? Uh, you know, I wonder. I, I'll bet you fishing game does have a limit on shopping carts. I'm willing to bet. I'm, I'm willing to bet. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> but I, I was thinking. About, I was. I, I know we're getting off uh, topic of the uh, the actual fishing thing. But I, yep. I, I I thought about when they when they drained Water Shop's pond and they found all the like an old car and oh, like a whole a whole stack of cars. Yeah, right. exactly. Your reactor was under there, and you know all those things. And uh, it's like that's kind of cool. That's the kind of stuff that's in here. You know, people drop rings and. And all kinds of things into, into water sources, so, jewelry, uh, mobile hey. electronics, you name it. Yeah. yeah. So have you have you del- have you delved into that? I haven't yet. <laughs> this, you know what? <laughs> What's up? Can I be on your podcast and we'll talk about magnet fishing? I'd love it. Let's you know what? Let's let's right. make a day of it. Let's go out and magnet fish. Yeah. We'll magnet fish the Hoyo yeah. Canals. It'll be fun. That's, that's exactly what I say. We'll do this in like a month or two. We'll go out and get to get some heavy magnets and some rope. And, there you uh, go. Me and Bobby Rose Beef will be magnet fishing off of the South End Bridge. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is uh, Bobby Rose Beef on the phone with us from the uh, the Jigs and Bigs podcast, which is available on, on Apple Podcasts. I'm sure other places, too. But 
I want to ask you about the the, the, the podcast because yep. you know you know I'm I'm doing a bit of it of, of myself and and obviously you know some podcasts are out there and and they grow very quickly and exponentially and then some of them just sit there and don't do much mm-hmm. uh, and and that's not been the case for you guys you guys have actually gotten some traction here yeah. you got you know Patreon people are are contributing you're making money on this thing and you're getting a lot of people. Who are who are listening to it as if you know for whatever reason you know fishing and outdoor sporting uh, is maybe an underserved category of, of of interest for people. Oh, definitely it is, and in the last two years, it's grown significantly. There's so many young people that now find the outdoors cool. It's you know I mean video games and stuff and all that that's always going to be an interest technology always but there's something about like what I consider the Instagram generation they're kind of r- relating more to the outdoors than than and I think anybody would have expected. See my I think uh, like my kids mm-hmm. I don't think they even know where the outdoors are located. <laughs> I thought that way about my kids too, but they, they know sometimes they just pick and choose, you know. I mean, they they see a door, yeah. but they're not exactly sure what's behind it. They're not questioning right. it all. I mean, with, with everybody being home for so long, yeah. that probably piqued a lot of interest for people going out. I remember going out to uh, like these places. I I obviously live in the hill towns, and, mm-hmm. I, and I would take my kids to these like places that nobody would ever normally go to. But you'd go because everybody had nothing to do. These places were packed, and oh, yeah. people were like, you know, fishing. They were. They were hiking. They were doing all these things, and it was kind of like uncomfortable. Going, you ruined my camp spot now because you're you're here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the peaked interest in fishing and outdoor uh, stuff probably had a lot to do with the pandemic, and you capitalized on that. Oh Good yeah, for you. And uh. I, you know the industry as a whole. It's funny this this last weekend there was the uh, there was this expo in Boxborough, Mass, a uh, fishing expo. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys were aware, but there was a little bit of snow that had occurred, and especially on the oh, eastern yeah. part yeah. of the state, they got <laughs> hammered so much that some of one of the partners, uh, a marina uh, that we partner with in Connecticut, Three Bells Outfitters, we w- worked alongside with them in their booth, and they actually closed up shop on Saturday because it was just it was just crazy. So. I was at this expo, but that day in all the snow, because of all that interest, it spawned all these new anglers where now there's this uh, movement that's known as the big swim bait sort of community in the fishing world. And these are folks that will go out and drop literally hundreds of dollars on one single lure that they'll throw. And then some of these guys will turn around and sell them on eBay for thousands of dollars. And it was happening right there yeah. at the expo. And it's almost like the treehouse brewing of fishing, that, that sort of world there. You know, it's taking it to like that next level. It's it's crazy. So, I mean, the, the capitalizing on it, I mean, the, the industry has done better, I think, than it has in years. You know, it, it's it's interesting. Again, you know, Bobby Rose Beef on the phone was from the uh, the Jigs and Bigs uh, podcast. You know, it's interesting. You know, a lot of people, especially maybe in like a in the more uh, you know metropolitan areas of of, yep. of Western Mass, don't necessarily get involved so much with uh, the outdoor sporting you know aspect of it. But you know, when you go you know to other parts of New England or in the hill towns, I mean, you know, we got a place up in in Vermont and you see all the all the people in which you know everything from you know snowmobiling to fishing to hunting yep. to you know everything uh you know the amount of people that are in it and the amount of money money they 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 spend to do it oh, yeah. this is a huge money making uh sector here i mean i i mean I, I just think of uh, you know when we go up to to uh, to Vermont uh you know in the in the spring and the summertime Yep. You know, it everybody is outdoors and everybody is 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 fishing and they're out there and they and they and they and they're really getting into it. Mm-hmm. It, it. It's it's amazing that you know these aren't just you know poor people you know sitting on a on a raft on a river. These are people who are spending tens of thousands of dollars on oh, equipment yeah. every single year. Yep, absolutely it's right. Huge money, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 bananas. Right. Yeah. So I mean, what? So like, uh, when you're out, what do you? Uh, what do you know? What kind of? What kind of boat you on? Are you? Uh, the, what, what kind of fishing are you doing? So I, I almost exclusively for years was doing bank fishing everywhere, and I would fish almost any body of water in those urban areas. I would try. I've caught fish out of you know uh, the least likely of spots, just to try it out. But lately, I have really taken into and what's growing in popularity and making that next level of fishing a little bit more accessible is kayak fishing. Um, 
kayak yeah. kayak fishing i think is is like it's like the gateway drug to buying you know to, to getting into so much you know yeah. and and our listeners they're they're from all different angles there's you have folks that just the, the weekend warriors that which they're that is the largest group the the folks that just go out there recreationally and have fun have an adventure and do their thing but kayak fishing is something they can achieve you don't need to drop you know eighty thousand dollars on this giant bass boat or something like that they can get into it for a fraction of that and then you yeah, know okay. you've what got about co- a fat guy like me who's got to buy the big giant kayak that's expensive Bob. steve <laughs> steve you and i know you know that i am a larger man than you are and i managed to get my my portly behind on uh, a kayak if you can do it I'm yeah i'm telling you in fact i can i can and i have awful balance i can stand on my kayak it's still far more affordable than getting into a boat like even at that level and you know what, what's what's crazy about it is from that it goes in all different directions the podcast is actually uh my co-host sean the fisherman which we have a history. We've been friends for years. Um, he has started a uh, kayak fishing tournament trail on the western side of the state where he's basically running uh, Massachusetts kayak bass in the western division. And they've had, mm. you know, full events for just about everything that they've done. It's been pretty remarkable. The competitive side for fishing is even even more insane. I bet you I'd win the master baiting part of I that. I bet you contest. would. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're damn right there, right. Steve. Because <laughs> yeah, he's, a, cause he's a, chronic, a chronic fisherman when it comes to that. Yeah. Uh, so the Saturday night in Nathan Bills yep. uh, in East Forest Park is your 100th episode live. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll be a, a live event. Uh, what have you got? To, what do you got planned for it? So we're going to do. Uh, obviously, we're going to do the check presentation from Make Massachusetts <coughs> Fishing Spots. Great again, excited about that. We've got a couple of our favorite segments, and I should mention that our podcast is very much not safe for work. We're fishing tips and stuff, but we're also a lot of entertainment. <laughs> so there's definitely some language. Uh, we say that to everybody we talk to uh, that inquires about the show. But we've got uh, three different New England based. Uh, I would call them extreme anglers that are are on youtube they've got a growing audience we've got uh becca yassine fishing with becca from youtube we've got uh todd grubb fishing grubs he's also on youtube he's also a uh, saltwater fisherman he works on a party boat and does amazing trips out for for tog and for all types of different saltwater species and then we've got a, a newcomer in the youtube world noel roth she's based in new hampshire we got to meet her at the expo and we're going to do a little like round table ask me anything type session for our third segment. It should be a lot of fun. There's going to be a ton of crowd, crowd engagement. And I, I can't say that we, we didn't get a little inspiration from Bax and O'Brien Live. What? what? Come on now. What? Come on. <laughs> this Please. Is a, You're ripping yeah. us off I know, now. I know. <laughs> you know, they, they, they say that, that uh, what, what is it? Um, uh, I can't think of the phrase now. The, the best form of flattery. Uh, <laughs> how am I thinking? Uh, oh, oh, uh, imitation. Imitation is the best form of flattery. Uh, there you but, go. But but ripping off is the best form of a lawsuit. Yeah, that's and, true. Uh, that's true. You know, I, listen, Bobby, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> suing anybody. You know, you, you want to take inspiration from that, you go right ahead. It's a great point. You, it's a great point you bring up, and I'm glad you were you were influenced by that live yeah, show because absolutely. we always had this idea. We always had this idea here that you know, wouldn't it be cool if people could just see what was going on during a typical hour of a morning show like that? That would be kind of cool. Here you are going out there doing it. Yep. Uh, and that, yeah. that, that, that's the way to get people yeah. to interact with you. That's Absolutely. exactly it. It's the engagement. I think that's what we all want. Well, and even if you got 20 people that walk into Nathan Bills on Saturday and say, I've never heard of you guys, yeah. you're now pre- doing a performance that, you know, it's just like a live band. You see something that sounds pretty interesting or sounds pretty good. You want to go back and see it or hear it again. And oh, you yeah. Gotta, and, and you got, and you got to believe who someone who may not be aware of the podcast fishes in that building. Oh, 100%. You got to. You yeah. gotta believe it. So it all starts at uh, at what time on Saturday, Bobby? We're starting at seven o'clock, um, and we're just gonna we're gonna f- sort of fly by the seat of our pants, but we're doing the entire episode, and then that episode will will drop on all major podcast platforms on Tuesday. So everybody, uh, the masses, will be able to hear it then. Very cool, yep. Bobby Rose Beef, the uh, the Jigs and Bigs podcast, and of course you can check him out on his trivia nights too, and check out uh, his website. But there's you know, the uh, the the Jigs and Bigs dot com website is up too, and it'll give you all the information yep. about what to expect in the podcast. Bobby, best of luck to you. Appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, man. Absolutely. It's Take care. Uh, 726 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102.